Welcome back. Moving forward, I'm going to talk about data splitting and shuffling in the next about five or six slides so that you're comfortable with the concept. And of course, I'm going to demonstrate all of this later on after this section is completed. So you would not only know the concepts, but also the hands-on application. So we're just going to reinforce all of these learning concepts. So right now, we're going to talk about data splitting and shuffling and why it's important in machine learning. What is data shuffling? So within the machine learning arena, we're often presented with a data set. So you have a bunch of data, you have raw data, you have data sitting in repositories across the enterprise, right? And then here you are with a question that needs to be answered through machine learning. So this data set that will be further split into training, testing, and validation. Typically, it's about training and testing, okay? But in my instance, I'm going to also talk about validation of data sets as well. And it's very, very important that data set is shuffled well to avoid any element of biasness or patterns in the split data sets. Because what happens is you take 100% of your data, and let's say you split, you do a 70 30 split, okay? Now, the split would mean that, or could mean that most of your data, the relevant data could end up within the 70% of that split or could end up within the 30% of the split. So that's gonna cause a real challenge and issues later on. So it's important that data set is shuffled, okay? So it's like randomly shuffled to avoid biasness or formation of patterns within the split data set before training the actual machine learning model. Shuffling data simply improves the machine learning model quality and also improves the predictive performance. So these are again, part of the uh, data collection, integration, data management, because 80% of the time in machine learning, you'd be preparing your data. How to shuffle, let me give you an example, a very simple example so you have an idea. Let's say, starting from the left, you have the sample data set, which has two columns, ID and A. And you have about four rows, one, two, three, and four, with respective ages being shown in the sample data set. Now, the middle part is you add a new column and fill using random number generator. So here you are presented with the sample data set again, and in the middle part, you create a column which is a random number generator. Subsequently, on the far right side, you'll notice that now you are going to sort the data set using that particular new column that was created, right? So this essentially shuffles the data. So once the data is now shuffled, then you can divide the data into training and test data sets. Okay, so straightforward, but important. Data splitting. So once you've shuffled the data, data splitting is the act of simply partitioning available data into two portions, and typically, usually for cross-validatory purposes, okay? One portion of the data is used to develop a predictive model, and the other to evaluate the model's performance. So you have the training set and the test set. It's about a 70-30 split, typically, or 60-40. Cross-validation. So the training or the test split does have its cautionary dangers, okay? So you need to kind of be wary of uh, certain dangers. And what those are, are simply what if the split we make isn't random, okay? Once again, we've not shuffled properly or if it's not random. Or the other question could be, what if one subset of our data has only people from certain state, employees with certain income level, but not other income levels. Only women or only people at certain age, right? So if you're only taking one part, it's not gonna classify later on. It's not gonna have that flag of zero and one, true and false, right? So it needs both data, the good data as well as the other data as well. So that's how machine learning is gonna make that comparison, right? Especially if you're using a classifier. So this will result in either overfitting, even though we're trying to avoid it, and this is where cross-validation comes in. 
So you have the data set. If you look at the image here, you'll have the data set on top with the training. And then you cross validate using the holdout method in testing. And then of course you do the data permitting with the training, validation, and testing. So just understand the concept of cross validation. And then of course the test and train splitting of the data has its own danger that you need to be aware of. How do we cross validate? One of the methods that we can use is called K folds. So in K folds cross validation, you would simply split your data into let's say K different subsets okay, or folds. And then you can use those K1 subsets to train that data and leave the last subset as test data. Once you've done that, then you can average the model against each of the folds and then finalize the model itself. Then test it again against the test set. So it's a process that you have to kind of go through, making sure that your data is cross validated and it's prepared perfectly for your machine learning problem. Here's an example of how you would actually go about cross-validation. And this is, again, just an example to show you, okay? So it's not, you don't have to worry about all this code here. This is Python using the scikit-learn. So this program would allow you to cross-validate using k-folds. So if you're a programmer, you would understand this. If you're a non-programmer, not to worry. This is just to demonstrate how you would use Python, for instance, right? Just as an example to do the cross validation. So you run the program up above, the arrays that you see, and then the results are displayed in the picture below. So the function split the original data into different subsets of the same data. So in this lesson, just wanted to cover the importance of training sets, test sets, some of the dangers, and how to go about actually working with the cross validation of data sets as well. So if any questions, post in the discussion area with this. Let's move to the next lesson.